Okay, we're recording now. So um, tell me about the Hear Not The Voices, which is the focal point of my video installation. What happens in the head of the schizophrenic when they hear voices? Well, it's a mystery. Um, and voices or auditory hallucinations are the most, uh, probably one of the most common symptoms. Um, in, in general, I, the, well, the voices are, tend to be unpleasant. Very rarely are they helpful, if at all. Um, so, I, and voice, hearing voices actually can be part of normal life. We know now. We know now that there are, a, you know, many people walking, the walking in the streets, living perfectly happy, content lives, and they hear voices. So hearing voices actually is not synonymous with with madness itself. Um, although some have called attention to the particular types of voices that people with schizophrenia uh, suffer. Um, in, in general, the, the, the voices in schizophrenia are relentless and constantly intruding into normal consciousness, uh, which makes living and functioning in the everyday world quite demanding. Uh, you can imagine this if you're if you're talking to someone and there's a, some external entity constantly talking, uh, and 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 what's been said is is unhelpful, derogatory, disgusting, uh, most of the time. Um, you explained to me earlier why they tend to be some of the voices heard. There seems to be quite a lot of swear word in the sort of the hearing of the abusive. Uh, could you explain again why there, tend, there tends to be quite a few swearing, some swearing at least? Yeah, I mean, I think there's no, the voice, that I think in all, I think for all of us there is a degree of censorship with our own thoughts, so we do kind of censor our own thoughts, whereas uh, auditory hallucinations coming from a completely different entity are uncensored. Uh, Hence, uh, the the content tends to be quite a uh, raw. Uh, the other aspect, I mean, going back way further in in psychiatry, different views for what schizophrenia actually is. A uh, sort of classic psychoanalytical thought would see schizophrenia as being a shut off, closed off part of yourself, a part that had been repressed, a part that couldn't actually be accessed. Uh, so, uh, in any in any hallucinatory voice, the source is always the same brain that perceives the voice. Um, it cannot be anything else. Otherwise, we're left left with the conclusion that the voices are real. So, the voice as such is always a product of the hallucinator. Um, and in class, that's okay. Can you repeat for me the bit where you said earlier, where um, very commonly uh, the sufferer hears two, almost like a conversation going on about with between the. Yeah, I mean these are these are the these are the hallmarks really of schizophrenic hallucinations. So hallucinations we're seeing can occur as part of normal existence, but the the schizophrenic hallucinations can be quite bizarre in that. Uh, the person can can perceive uh, the hallucinatory voice coming from a different part of their own body, or they might hear their own voice outside in an external space, which is actually quite difficult to get your mind around that. Uh, sometimes you might hear your own voice before you've had the thought, or you might hear, uh, or you might hear the the voice outside after you've had the thought. So that's quite. It's actually quite a diff difficult experience to describe and an even harder experience to wrap your head around and uh, imagine what that would be like. The other uh, type of voices that are seen commonly in schizophrenia are where there are a number of voices discussing discussing the the person uh, or commenting on the per on the person, actually in the form of a running commentary. Uh, which is a real nuisance. You can imagine going about your life when, with a, with this chatter in the background, uh, constantly uh, commenting and what you're 
doing and commenting on that quite negatively. Uh, you did say earlier on, and it was very interesting how, no matter how much study has been carried out on the subject, um, uh, one of the characteristics of schizophrenia is the fact that it's, to some extent, still very much an understandable condition. An understandable. So it's difficult. Some of it's not quite easy to understand. Mm. Could you sort of well, by by, de your by definition, it, by definition, schizophrenia will will always be impossible to understand and empathise with empathise meaning to step or go for a walk in another person's shoes um, I, I, in, in the 19th century and there on I think people have been a bit absolutist about this uh, I do think you can have empathy and you can go for a walk or you can experience what it's like to be psychotic uh, but there comes a point where I guess the experience that's been described to you becomes it is actually so bizarre uh, that it's actually quite difficult to to uh, imagine what that would be like. Everyone can imagine what it's like to be depressed uh, or anxious or obsessional. These are uh, you know these are in some ways part of a you know n normal existence but to be truly mad is a, is a shift a jump okay then i, get, I need two more summers um you know we're typing on the keyboard do you mind just which keyboard there's a keyboard i'm picking up this keyboard do you mind yeah. just, just for like one minute sorry oh. um, um <laughs> <laughs> uh, i need the la uh, basically um if you could say for me um voices tell you to do things um yeah, voices to tell you to do things. Uh, they will order you. You said it on like voice. Voice will tell you to maybe uh, do something, mm. say something. You said that, which I thought was very interesting. Like mm. ordering almost to, uh, to, to, yeah, to do or say something. Sorry, well, <laughs> that's the last thing I like you to say. Yeah, uh, command. Those are command hallucinations. Is that what they call command hallucinations? Yeah, command hallucinations can occur in schizophrenia. Command hallucinations can occur. I actually command hallucinations can occur as part of normal life. Command hallucinations are probably not that pathological in themselves, uh, but nevertheless, if if relentless, if if deeply intrusive, then really they, they do become pathological. Um, what's a command hallucination? A voice instructing you to act in a way that might not be the way that you would choose to act, commanding you to behave violently, for instance. Uh, I this is quite common. Mm, I've read somewhere that uh, the, the sufferer uh, could mainly be harmful to themselves more than to others. Is this accurate or is it...? Um... Uh, well, there's a slight increased risk. A slight increased risk, uh, although it tends to be, to be small. It tends to be quite small. Is that what you want to talk about? If no, I was are, are people with schizophrenia dangerous? Do, um, Statistically, they are more dangerous than 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 the normal population. If there is such a thing, there's a slight excess of dangerous criminality, violence, and people with schizophrenia. There's no getting around that. But the amount of violent acts committed by schizophrenia is tiny because schizophrenia is such a rare condition and. Most people with schizophrenia are not violent, so it's a statistical thing rather than a defining feature of the disorder, per se, if that makes sense. That makes sense. Thank you so much. Thank, <laughs> you, thank you so much. Sorry about I 